Miter saws can be frustrating, dangerous, and produce some of the worst cuts, but the fix isn't complicated or even expensive. Here's how to get the sharpest and highest quality cuts out of your miter saw, regardless of the brand you are using, all while improving the safety. The first thing you want to do is create a zero clearance bottom plate. When material isn't supported from the bottom, it tends to get tear out. Most people don't have a zero clearance plate for the bottom of their miter saw. For the few that do, they spend a lot of time making a custom throat plate out of unnecessary walnut. And if you have the time and the patience, that can be a fun project and it's an awesome skill builder. But for the rest of us, a fast and simple solution is really all we need. Few know about the fast cap zero clearance tape. My buddy Matt from 731 Woodworks introduced me to it and I love it. You can buy a pack of five of these on Amazon, usually for $20. I got them on sale for 10 and they last a long time. Each strip is two inches wide by 16 inches long, which is long enough if you have a 12 inch sliding saw. If you're on the struggle bus like me and only have a boring six inch chop saw, you can cut these 16 inch strips in half and double the usage. In my case, I removed the tear out on the bottom of my workpiece for $1 in a few seconds. Totally beats making my own plate. Every miter saw should have a zero clearance auxiliary back fence. Now most of us think of this as a way to prevent tear out, and that's true, but there's two additional benefits from making an auxiliary fence. First, you increase your safety when you cut small pieces. No longer will off cuts shoot out at you if they're in the line of fire. But as a second bonus, you get a cut line you can reference off of. There's no need for one of those lasers that really doesn't even work. It's really tempting to overcomplicate this, and I see it all over YouTube. And yes, you can use a nice half inch piece of hardwood and buy hardware to attach it from the back. And perhaps you should, but you don't have to do that. If you have a scrap piece of half inch plywood or half inch MDF, you can rip that down to the height of your fence. Just make sure you either plane or route a chamfer on the bottom edge to provide an escape for sawdust to get out of the way. You can also cut a shallow rabbit on your table saw if you don't want to use a router, or if you don't want to use any of those tools, you can just shim up the auxiliary fence using some playing cards while you fasten it. Securing it with hardware is best, but if you're in a pinch, you can use the blue painter's tape and super glue activator trick. Here's a tip on the blue painter's tape trick, and I'm gonna break from consensus here. Instead of springing and paying seven or eight dollars, sometimes nine dollars for a blue painter's tape, I go for the cheap beige masking tape, which is usually two or three dollars. I found that it works stronger, doesn't leave any residue, and is about a third of the cost. If you're gonna use this trick, it's simple. You put a piece of tape on your fence, you put a piece of tape on the back of your plywood, you apply some CA glue to one side, you spray activator on the other, and within seconds of contact, you have a bond. You don't have to clamp or wait for a long time. Now, if you wanna do a little better, skip this completely and get a high quality double-sided tape made for woodworking. It's stronger, thinner, faster, and cleaner than the blue tape super glue method. You should avoid carpet tapes at all costs and avoid this 3M double-sided tape that I found that I thought would be a good fit. It's too thick, it's like an orthopedic shoe. You want this stuff. You can find it on Amazon or from Tay Tools. I'll put a link in the description below. I use this all the time, especially when I'm routing templates or on my CNC. It's very thin, I think maybe seven mils. It's very strong, and when you peel it off, there's no lingering adhesive. Everyone should have a roll of this in their shop. Now that you have a fence, you can use a stop block, but just be aware of those knockoff stop block scams out there. It's pretty prevalent. I did a video here, you can check that out. Now before you cut into your brand new zero clearance surfaces, now is the best time to assess the condition of your blade. Now my blade is five years old and it was the cheapest blade I could find at the orange store. I didn't even get a Diablo, I got the cheapest one and it's total junk. I'm swapping mine out for a CMT full curth 80 tooth blade, the best you can get. Now these blades are industrial quality, they're meant to run all day, and they're just as good as Forest, if you've heard of that brand, and they are about half the cost. Now if you're on a budget, you can get the CMT Thin Curve Blades, ITK Extreme is what they're called, and they're miles better than the Devil, and usually the same price or cheaper. Now both of these lines of CMT blades are resharpenable too, so it's a great investment and it saves the landfill from cheap disposable blades we all buy. Buying quality saw blades is one of the best investments you can do in your shop. Not only will you get better cuts and better finish, 
but you actually save money in the long run. Now, if you want to get one of these, I can help you save some cash. I've got a 10% off code in the description below. And my favorite place to get these is from Tay Tools, a family business based in the USA. Let's give them our support. Look at the before and after. Here's what Tear Out looks like on Cherry. Walnut. And the most expensive lumber in the world, Pandemic Pine, circa 2020. I'm still triggered. But wait, there's more. I've come dangerously close to cutting my finger off at the miter saw. We all end up in situations where we need to cut a small piece, and in a rush, we make the foolish rationalization that it's perfectly safe to put our finger inches away from a spitting blade, thinking that if something were to happen, we'd be able to react in time, and that's total nonsense. That's where the fast cap $10 million stick comes in. This is crazy. At first, it looks like a normal push stick, like this, but it's not. It's better than a push stick because it provides three points of contact. All you do is place downward force on the stick far away from the blade, and like magic, or physics, your piece is securely held close to the danger zone with your hands safely away. And most importantly, if you do this with a push stick, you're pushing into the blade. But with this, you're just pushing down, and the three points of contact are doing the work. And this is pretty cheap. You may be thinking, wow, Drew, now my miter saw is safe. Well, it is, but there's still danger lurking out there, and it's coming for your wallet and your soul. Influencer NFTs are about to hit the market, and they're coming for your hard-earned cash. In this video, I expose the secret strategy that your favorite woodworkers are using on YouTube to make millions off of you. You need to educate yourself and just say no. And in case you didn't get it, all that is sarcasm, but you should still watch the video. There's a good laugh in there for you. Peace.